How did Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa go from an island in Hawaii to a quarterback in the National Football League? This is the story of Tua Tagovailoa. The pinpoint accurate left-handed quarterback has faced a tough road to the top and battled through an ocean of adversity on his way to being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Now that he has a coach who believes in him and weapons surrounding him, will we see Tua hold the Lombardi Trophy in the near future? You're watching The Halftime Show. Please subscribe to the channel and you'll never miss a future upload or video just like this one. Tua Tagovailoa was born in Iwa Beach in Hawaii to Samoan parents Galu and Diane. It's a small town full of hardworking people and Tua quickly discovered where he wanted to apply his work ethic at a very young age. He grew up with an early passion for football and slept with a ball under his arm as a kid, dreaming of making it big one day. That was his goal and he was determined to reach it. His father coached him and his younger brother Tailua from a young age and it was actually that coaching relationship that turned Tua into a lefty. See, the young quarterback is right-handed. He does everything else in his life with his right hand but throws a football with his left. Why? Because his father's a lefty and he wanted someone else in the family to join him. Tua quickly stood out as a kid, able to throw the football a lot further than anybody else his age. He excelled in Pop Warner football at just eight years old and took up varsity football at the first opportunity in high school. Tagovailoa's passion for football came from his grandfather, Seau, who believed that Tua would one day be a star. As a kid, he used to visit his grandfather, who was the chief of the family, to tell him about his games. Tua's talent quickly shone in high school. He threw 33 touchdowns in his first season of varsity football while posting over 2,500 passing yards. He was invited to play in the 2016 All-American Bowl and continued to improve on the gridiron as scouts started paying attention from some of college football's biggest schools. The left-handed high school star was originally listed as a four-star recruit, with his accuracy proving to be the standout quality of his game. As his high school career played out, he received five-star grades, and the most established programs in the country were knocking on the door. He had offers pouring in from all over the country, USC, LSU, Oregon, Ole Miss, North Carolina, but it was Alabama who stood out from the crowd. Nick Saban was one of the most successful coaches in college football at getting his guys to the NFL, and that was to his dream. So deciding to play football for the Crimson Tide wasn't a particularly tough choice for the young Samoan quarterback. Before he got to Alabama, Tua was invited to the Elite 11 program, a high school quarterback program that brings the best QBs in the country together for a competitive camp and professional coaching. Not only did he win the competition, but received high praise from Trent Dilfer, who runs the program, with an emotional speech at the closing of the show. Tua was headed for Alabama. He had put his faith in Nick Saban to help him get to the NFL, and there wasn't a program in the country that gave him a better chance. His decision to go and play at Alabama meant moving his family away from Hawaii to focus on that dream. His father was still coaching him at home, and so his parents moved with him to Alabama. That decision sparked some controversy as Tua's father, Galu, was expected to take up the chief's position as the leader of the family. When the Tua's grandfather, Seyu, passed away, the family needed to find a new chief, and Galu was the man who had been raised to assume that role. The fact that he was instead in Alabama, thousands of miles away from the family, was not something that was considered normal in his family's culture. But Tua had his heart set on making it to the NFL, and his family wasn't about to stop sacrificing now that he had gotten so close. When he got to campus, Jalen Hurts was the starter. He had proven himself in his first year as the team's starter in 2017 was set to be a big year for the dual-threat quarterback. Hertz led the program to a 12-1 season and a spot in the national championship game against Georgia. Tua had gotten some reps as a freshman in relief of Hertz during blowout victories and against lesser teams, but this was still the Jalen Hurts show and the national championship game was a chance for Hertz to announce himself as the best in the country. The Georgia Bulldogs have gained a reputation under Kirby Smart for their dominant defense, particularly dominating the line of scrimmage. As the game unfolded, Jalen Hurts struggled, and Bama was unable to move the football effectively throughout the first half. Georgia scored within seconds of halftime, making the game 13-0, and Alabama was struggling to find any rhythm at all offensively. 
It was then that Nick Saban made one of the boldest calls of his career. He benched his starting quarterback at halftime in the national championship game in favor of the freshman Tua Tagovailoa. Nick Saban has won national championships at multiple programs and is considered to be one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. He believed that in that moment, the freshman gave the tie the best chance to win. Tua came out in the second half and led the team down the field, throwing a strike in the end zone to Henry Ruggs for Alabama's first touchdown of the game. Georgia came right back and made it 20-7, and then Tua threw a pick on the very next drive. By the fourth quarter, it was 20-10 to Georgia, and Alabama were running out of time. They squeezed three points out of the next drive, and after getting the ball back with around seven minutes to go, Tua led his second touchdown drive of the half, throwing a strike to Calvin Ridley in the end zone to tie the game at 20 points apiece. Overtime would eventually be the deciding factor, and Tua went from a disastrous play to the biggest play of his life in a matter of seconds. Georgia had stepped up first and kicked a field goal, meaning Tua and the Tide needed to find at least three points to keep the game alive. Already in field goal range, Tua backpedaled to evade pressure and was eventually sacked for a huge loss, pushing the Tide into potentially catastrophic situation. However, on second and 26 on the very next play, Tua threw a dart down the left side to Devontae Smith as he strode into the end zone, walking it off and winning the national championship for Alabama. That game was a major influence on Tua's career. He went from a freshman who hadn't really taken meaningful snaps in his career to the kid on the front cover of every publication following the national championship game. The following season, he claimed the starting job at Alabama and threw for 3,946 yards and 42 touchdowns with only six picks, backing up the performance he'd put on tape against Georgia with a full season of highlights. Jalen Hurts would eventually transfer to Oklahoma, with the two still having a healthy relationship. Tua was now the main man and was named the Sporting News College Football Player of the Year for his 2018 performance, as well as earning college football's prestigious Walter Camp and Maxwell Awards. He was named a consensus All-American, a member of the All-SEC First Team, and the SEC Offensive Player of the Year. Going into the 2019 season, the phrase tank for Tua was ringing around the NFL. He was set to be the number one pick in the draft, and there was nobody who even came close to him before that college football season got underway. It was simple. If you didn't have the number one pick or you weren't able to give up a haul to prize it away from whoever did, you weren't going to get close to Tua Tagovailoa. But that season, a lot of things changed. Tua had faced injuries in his college career, but nothing quite like the battle he was about to face in 2019. He had been thriving again all season. The kid from Hawaii threw six touchdowns against Ole Miss that year and five against South Carolina in two of his best performances of the season, amassing 31 touchdown passes to just three interceptions by the time he got to Week 12 against Mississippi State. Tua threw another two TDs in that game, but then disaster struck. As he took the snap with the Tide leading 35-7, the announcer asked, when will Tua come out for the afternoon? Citing that he had done a great day's work, Alabama was going to win and he could sit for the remainder of the game to focus on the next one. On that same play, Tua dropped back and was flushed right by incoming pressure. As he escaped the pocket, he was dragged down by a defender and hit by a second, and the collision left him writhing in pain on the field. It was a nasty-looking hit. He landed under the full force of the defenders, and his helmet had popped off amidst the chaos. The result was a severe hip injury and a broken nose just to make matters worse. Tua had suffered a dislocated hip and a posterior wall fracture. It was the same injury that killed the career of legendary Raiders running back Bo Jackson, and all of a sudden, everything he had worked for was up in the air. While all this was going on, Joe Burrow had popped out of nowhere and led a historic season at LSU. He had fired his name out of nowhere into the Heisman conversation, and suddenly, the outcome of the upcoming number one pick in the 2020 NFL Draft was called into question. Tua had to have intensive surgery to repair the damage and faced a very lengthy road to recovery. Fans wondered if he would ever be able to play again at such a high level, and Joe Barrow went out and won the Heisman and the national championship in what is now considered the greatest college football season by any quarterback in history.
The Cincinnati Bengals had the first pick in the draft, and the Miami Dolphins, who desperately needed a franchise quarterback, had won a couple of meaningless games at the end of the season that put them fifth in the draft. The 2020 draft was a real spectacle. Tua had gone from being this kid that nearly every NFL franchise had been monitoring for the past two seasons as one of the best players in the country and a lock for the number one spot to now potentially being overlooked entirely in the first round due to concerns about his hip and longevity in the NFL. He started to receive a lot of criticism. He was injury prone. He wouldn't be able to manage the physicality of the pros. He didn't have the strongest arm. Joe Burrow was simply better. Everything had changed, and when the draft rolled around, nobody knew what to expect or how this thing was going to play out. All we knew was that Joe Burrow was going to be the number one pick. When Burrow was selected, the teams in second, third, and fourth were teams that didn't need a quarterback. The Washington Commanders selected Chase Young, the Lions drafted cornerback Jeff Okuda, and the New York Giants drafted tackle Andrew Thomas to protect Daniel Jones. Miami had landed at number five in the draft, and had Tua stayed healthy, they would have undoubtedly missed out on him at that spot. Still, the injury forced teams to hesitate, and nobody was going to give up a haul of picks to jump Miami for a QB with so many question marks. Roger Goodell came on screen and announced the pick. The Miami Dolphins selected Tua Tagovailoa with the fifth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. Tua got his first game action in the NFL in Game 6 against the New York Jets. He threw just two passes in relief of veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick, and it was then announced that following the bye week, he would start his first game against the LA Rams. As the season went on, Tua threw a total of 11 touchdowns and five picks in nine games for Miami. The Dolphins had come under fire for their handling of the rookie, benching him to put Ryan Fitzpatrick back out there on one occasion and seeming to show a lack of trust in opening up the playbook and allowing him to play it to his full potential. At the end of the season, the offensive coordinator was fired and Brian Flores announced that the team would have two coordinators the following season in George Godsey and Eric Studesville. It was a strange approach, and yet another decision within the organization that didn't seem to help the young quarterback reach his potential. While Tua was playing as well as he could under the circumstances, the Miami Dolphins and the outside media seemed to be constantly trying to find a reason to replace him. Deshaun Watson and the Dolphins were constantly linked with a potential trade, and then Tom Brady's name emerged as a candidate to come to Miami and try to help the franchise win a Super Bowl. Through the two years in the NFL, it felt as though the Dolphins had failed the kid, and then everybody was blaming him for their failures. He didn't have a competent offensive coordinator for his first two seasons in the league. The offensive line was woeful, and outside of Jalen Waddell in year two, he didn't have any talented pass catchers either. Miami was putting practice squad receivers out there with him and expecting him to win games. And when it didn't happen, the rumors of replacing the quarterback grew louder. In 2022, that all finally changed. Brian Flores, who is very obviously a defensive-minded coach, has been fired by the franchise. And a quirky, mad scientist known as Mike McDaniel was brought in from San Francisco to take over the role. McDaniel was a rookie head coach, but he'd spent his entire career shadowing Kyle Shanahan and learning everything he could in preparation to one day run his own team. He got that chance in Miami, and it finally felt like the Dolphins had done something to support the quarterback they drafted two years earlier. They didn't stop there either. Jalen Waddell had had a superb rookie season, and when news broke that Tyreek Hill was potentially unhappy with his current situation in Kansas City, the Dolphins acted fast and traded for him to bring him down to Miami and create one of the most explosive wide receiver tandems in football. When the 2022-23 season got underway, everything looked different. In Week 2, Tua led a sensational late comeback against the Baltimore Ravens in which he threw six touchdowns and 469 yards. The following week, he led a home win against the Buffalo Bills despite being knocked out of the game with a worrying-looking head injury, and the following week he would once again face tremendous adversity. Tua was taken to the ground in a Week 4 road game against the Cincinnati Bengals, and having hit his head on the ground for the second week in a row, his body locked up and forced a muscle spasm reaction that looked extremely frightening for those watching the game. He was taken off on the cart to be evaluated, and while he avoided any serious injuries, he was going to miss some more time. 
He returned having been fully cleared in week seven against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And for the next several weeks, he was playing at an extremely high level. He threw 11 touchdowns and zero picks in five games, and Tua was 8-0 in the games. He'd started for the franchise that season. The team hit a slump down the stretch, and Tua played really poorly in the final game he would play in 2022 against the Green Bay Packers in 2016. After the game, it was apparent that he had suffered yet another concussion, and he would be ruled out for the remainder of the season. Miami made the playoffs with a 9-8 record, but Tua didn't play in the game, and the offseason would come with yet more questions about his future. Some were calling for him to retire, citing that suffering multiple concussions was never a good thing, and the nature of those concussions should be a reason to consider hanging it up for good. Tua sought out professional advice, consulted his family, and ultimately decided that he wanted to continue to play football. 2023 will now be yet another opportunity for him to prove himself and perhaps the first season in his short NFL career where he doesn't face any adversity whatsoever. Tua Tagovailoa must be one of the toughest players in football from a mentality standpoint. So far in the NFL, he has faced constant criticism, and the media decided that they were going to make a villain out of him and have been finding a way to criticize him ever since. He's dealt with grueling injuries and recoveries, controversy within the organization that drafted him with both the team owner and the head coach, and seems to have constantly been treading against the waves to prove that he belongs. When he was healthy in 2022, Tua was playing at an MVP level. Mike McDaniel was a great hire both for Tua himself and for the offense. And if it all goes to plan in 2023, there's no reason that the Dolphins can't be a contender. While Justin Herbert, who was drafted with the pick that followed Tua in the 2020 draft, has been handed a five-year $262 million contract and Joe Barrow fetched more with a five-year $275 million contract, Tua has not yet been offered an extension. The franchise explained that they would not be doing so before the 2023 season. And so this is a huge year for Tua's career financially. Miami Dolphin fans deserve to see him playing at his very best. Let's hope that he gets a full, healthy season and a fair shot at finally proving himself as one of the NFL's best and most accurate quarterbacks. There's no doubt he can play, but life has certainly dealt him a tough hand so far. Will Tua be able to surpass Dan Marino as the best QB in Miami Dolphins history? Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching the Halftime Show.